I built a 4 by 8 workbench that lets me take tools, lift them up when I need them, and put them away so that I have a clean workbench whenever I need one. And on top of all that, I also built a smart dust collection system that can be triggered for any machine with just a press of a button. Here's how I did it. But first, I just wanted to say, most people who... Okay, 100% of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. And as one of the few things in this world that's actually free, why not just do it? You can unsubscribe at any time and literally all that will do is make me feel bad. Think of the power you hold. So to do this, it was pretty simple. Like I said, I want to do a 4x8 workbench. So what I did is I went and bought some 2x4s and 2x6s, came home, and I started building a 4x8 frame. I won't lie, I didn't really have a whole plan figured out in my head yet. I just had a general idea of what I wanted it to look like, and I just kind of started chasing that. Now I know there's some people out there that would say, never use dimensional lumber for anything that you're going to do as furniture, no matter how nice or ugly it's going to be. But unfortunately, I didn't hear that until after I started, so here we go. I knew right here is where I wanted to put the drill press. I also knew that mimicking out the tool's movement was probably the most accurate way to figure out how to do this. Here you can see it's all mounted up and I start giving it a little test. Man, look how gentle I am with it. I'm like a proud father. Man, I'm so proud of it, I even decided to walk around for another two minutes to observe it. That's love right there. Up next is the miter saw. Now if we're continuing this whole proud father thing, this is definitely going to be the favorite child. It's the main tool of this entire build and it's also the most expensive tool of this entire build. So I do spend a lot of time with it and I make sure that it works really well. Also, don't worry, these side pieces of wood here, those are just placeholders. I, it kind of looks kind of ugly now, but don't worry, don't worry, it's not going to be there for long. Also, I guess if we're doing this whole family dynamic, then the dust collector in the back there is like the middle child. It's completely neglected and it isn't going to get any screen time. But also like family, we're going to have a third child in the form of another tool that's going to completely block that thing out. So we'll forget about it soon. So I just want to give a quick explanation about the table saw. Obviously, you can see I have it installed here right now but in a bit, you're gonna see it's probably disappeared. The reason for that is I don't think I wanna use it anymore. Now, obviously at the time of recording this video, I totally was intending on using it. I was gonna use the rest of the table as a outfeed table to hold all the material. But as time went on, I kind of decided, A, I really don't like that location for it, and B, I really wanna build a CNC table saw. Now it's fine. The short term, I'll just put another board there to make it more workspace. But in the long term, I can just take that off and swap it out with a different tool. Because, you know, let's be honest, there's always going to be more tools. I guess at this point, all that's left to do is just attach the top, cut out all the spots for where the tools are going to be, and sit back and watch more God of War gameplay. <laughs> so with all the parts cut out, all I had to do now was screw the top on, and I was able to move on to the next step. For the dust collector, all I'm using is a simple light switch to be able to turn it on and off that I have mounted in the front. So what I'm doing now is running the elect- Oh, hey, look at that. It's the second child. I guess he does get some more screen time. What I'm doing now is running the electrical all the way to the back and setting up a box for it. This is going to be a box that has power on all the outlets except for one. That one is powered only when the switch is turned on, which you guessed it, is going to power the dust collector. So unfortunately, my camera stopped recording for a lot of what happened next, but I'll explain kind of what the gist of it was. I added hinges to all the doors so that each tool could have its own door. I added tool holders for all my tools. Now, I guess if we're talking about middle children, the real middle child would be the belt sander because that got literally no video of it, but oh well. Anyway, obviously from here, I decided to go around and paint the entire body black. And then for the top, I decided to paint it a sort of space gray looking paint. I ran out of black, so. Okay, so let's talk about how I'm going to do the dust collection portion. What I want is pretty straightforward. I'm going to have buttons set up at each machine. When I press that button, it's going to simply open the blast gate that's designated to that machine and close all the other ones. So if I press the one by the miter saw, open up that blast gate, close all the others. Pretty straightforward. How I'm going to do this is I plan on using some pneumatic cylinders. I've had a few little small ones just laying around, so I haven't been really sure what to use them for, and I think this will be perfect for it. Now, there is one thing. With this entire bench, I want it to be something that's modular, something that I can move around the shop, and all it requires to work is one plug that you plug into an outlet somewhere, and the entire system works. 
which makes it a little complicated with air because though I do have an air compressor in my shop, it's hooked up to the shop. I can't just bring it around the shop with me. Which got me thinking, what if we just use an airbrush compressor? These are tiny little air compressors that are designed to be used with airbrushes. They don't come with a tank, although you can get some that come with them. They just simply turn on when they detect that pressure is needed and turn off when pressure isn't needed. AKA, you turn on the air gun, you turn off the air gun. And I think that it should be able to work perfectly fine in this scenario. Because these cylinders really don't take that much air to move. On top of all that, these are pretty power efficient because I'll be able to control them and tell them when to turn on and off. And when I do turn them on, they're not going to try to fill up an air tank. They're just going to fill up the lines that are connected to it and shut off after like three or four seconds. Okay, so I think I finally got this thing working enough for just a quick test to see how it's going to work. After like an hour of struggling with this stupid thing, don't buy this one. Holy crap. They had it pre-assembled, but not a single one had Teflon tape on it. So it just leaked in every single airport. I basically had to take the entire thing apart and reassemble it. So thanks for that, I guess. But anyway, it's assembled now. We've got the little air compressor here. If we press a button, this will close. That kicks on and kicks out. If I release it, it opens back up. Very violently, I'll admit, but we'll fix that later on. And this one. So you can see I'm using an old PC case to hold everything. These are great for holding a lot of stuff in such a small spot. And then I've got the power supply and the valves in the back here. And then in the front, I've got the Arduino on a PCB that controls two relay boards that will turn on things like the air compressor and other parts of the system. So all that's left at this point is to add all the different dust collecting tubing inside the bench and run it to each machine. This setup can control four different blast gates, but right now I'm only actually using two. First one is the miter saw, and the second one is a split between the drill press and the belt sander. These two are being split because the belt sander is mostly just going to shoot most of its dust into the dust port by itself. It doesn't really need a lot of suction. And the drill press is just so I can clean up any dust that gets created. The third one is going to be going to the outside of the bench. So for any sort of external pieces that I want dust collection for, they can hook up to that and then it'll start sucking through that port. This will be things like CNC machine, CNC table saw, you never know. And then the last port is going to be for if I add any other machines to the actual bench, which I plan on doing eventually. So, yeah. All right, all I'd say that's left is to give the whole system a test. If I press this button, it should open up the one for the miter saw, which I think it did. Which one's the miter saw? It's the one way back there, which it did. Cool. If I press this button, it should be for the drill press and the belt sander, which it worked. I can see that opened up. The next thing we'll have to solve is the actual dust collection for this machine. It doesn't suck very well in this. When it's down all the way, the dust can just, it's supposed to go up into this boot, but it can just fly all over the place here. Um, what my plan is, is to just create something that'll extend this so that it goes kind of like this, I guess. And then that way it'll get flung up into this thing and get sucked up. Well, I think all that's left at this point is to show off the finished product.